Next on the dreaded list is diabetes and vision loss, which go together since diabetes is the leading cause of preventable middle-aged blindness. Even with intensive diabetes treatment, at least three injections of insulin a day or these implantable insulin pumps, the best we can offer is usually just a slowing down of the progression of your disease. We can slow down your blindness with modern medicine. But a half century ago, Kempner at Duke proved you could reverse it with an ultra strict plant-based diet, mostly rice and fruit, 44 consecutive patients with diabetic retinopathy, 30% of their uh, cases, their eyes improved from like this to that. That's not supposed to happen. Diabetic retinopathy was considered a sign of irreversible damage. What does this mean in real life? Unable to even read headlines to normal vision. How do we treat diabetic retinopathy these days? With steroids and other drugs injected straight into the eyeball. And if that doesn't work, there's always panretinal laser photocoagulation, which laser burns are placed over nearly the entire retina. Surger surgeons literally burn out the back of your eyeball. Now, why would they do that? Well, one theory is about if you kill off most of the retina, the little remaining piece you have will get more of the blood flow. Now, when I see this, along with Kempner's work, I can't help but feeling like history's been reversed. Like, yeah, can you believe 50 years ago we had that barbaric burn out your socket surgery? But now, thankfully, we know that through dietary interventions alone, you know, we can sometimes reverse the blindness, right? But instead of learning, medicine seems to have forgotten. The most efficient way to avoid diabetic complications is to simply eliminate the diabetes in the first place, which is often feasible with a healthy enough diet. Plant-based diet beat out the conventional American Diabetes Association diet in a head-to-head -head randomized controlled clinical trial without restricting portions, no calorie or carb counting. A review of all such studies found that those following plant-based diets experience better improvements compared to those diets that include animal products. But this is nothing new. The successful treatment of type 2 diabetes with a plant-based diet was demonstrated back in the 1930s, showing that a diet centered around vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans, more effective in controlling diabetes than any other diet. Randomized control trial. After five years, no big change in the control group, but the plant-based group insulin needs were cut in half, and a quarter ended up off of insulin altogether. Now, this was a low-calorie diet, though, so maybe their diabetes just got better because they lost weight. To tease that out, what we would need is a study where they switch people to a healthy diet but force them to eat so much food that they'd actually maintain their weight. Then we could see if a plant-based diet had benefits independent of all the weight loss. We'd have to wait another 44 years, but here it is. Subjects were weighed every day and they started losing weight. They were made to eat more food. In fact, so much food, some of the participants had trouble eating all. all, all, all. Um, but eventually they adapted and so no significant alterations in body weight despite restricting meat, dairy, eggs, and junk. Okay, so z with zero weight loss, did plant-based diets still help? Here's the before and after insulin requirements of the 20 people that put on the diet. So the number of units of insulin they had to inject themselves before and after going plant-based. Overall, insulin requirements were cut about 60% and half were able to get off insulin altogether, despite no change in weight. Now, how many years did this take? Was it five years like the other study? No, 16 days. So we're talking diabetics who have had diabetes for as long as 20 years, injecting as much as 20 units of insulin a day, and then as few as 13 days later, they're off insulin altogether, thanks to less than two weeks of a plant-based diet. Diabetes for 20 years, then off all insulin in less than two weeks. Here's patient 15, 32 units of insulin on the control diet, and then 18 days later on none. Lower blood sugars on 32 units less insulin. That's the power of plants. 
And there's a bonus, their cholesterol dropped like a rock too, in 16 days to under 150. You know, just like moderate changes in diet usually result only in modest reductions in cholesterol, you know, asking patients with diabetes to make moderate changes achieves equally moderate results, which is one possible reason they end up on drugs, injections, or both. Right? Everything in moderation is a truer statement than people realize. Moderate changes in diet can leave one with moderate blindness, moderate kidney failure, moderate amputations, you know. maybe just a few toes. Right? Moderation in all things is not necessarily a good thing. The more we as physicians ask from our patients, the more we are likely to get. The old adage, shoot for the moon, seems to apply, may be more effective than limiting patients to small steps that may sound more manageable, but not sufficient to actually stop the disease. The only thing better than reversing diabetes is not get it in the first place. You know, that study that purported to show that diets high in meat, eggs, and dairy could be as harmful to health as smoking supposedly suggested that, men are, that people under 65 who eat lots of animal protein four times as likely to die from cancer or diabetes. But if you look at the actual study, you'll see that's not true. Those eating a lot of animal protein didn't have just four times more risk of dying from diabetes. They had 73 times higher risk of dying from diabetes. As one eats more and more plant-based, there appears to be a stepwise drop in the rates of diabetes down to 78% lower prevalence among those eating strictly plant-based. Where protection building incrementally as one move from eating meat daily to less than daily, right? To just fish, to no meat, to no eggs and dairy either. Similar pattern was found for the leading cause of vision loss among elderly, cataracts, right? This suggests it's not all or nothing. Any steps we can make towards eating healthier may accrue benefits. But why? I mean, why is total meat consumption associated with higher risk of diabetes, especially processed meat, particularly poultry? Well, there's a whole list of potential suspects, culprits in meat. Yes, it may be the animal protein. Maybe it's the animal fat. Maybe it's the cholesterol. Maybe it's the iron leading to free radical formation, which can cause inflammation. Advanced glycation end products are another problem. They promote oxidative stress and inflammation, and food analysis show the highest levels of these so-called glycotoxins are found in meat. Here are the 15 most contaminated foods found with glycotoxin contamination. Chicken, pork, pork, chicken, chicken, beef, chicken, chicken, beef, chicken, turkey, chicken, fish, beef, and McNuggets. I don't know if you can actually <laughs> call that chicken, but all right. Though other foods from animal sources can also harbor these pro-oxidant chemicals. Now, in this study, they fed diabetics foods packed with glycotoxins, uh, chicken, uh, fish, eggs, and their inflammatory markers shot up, like tumor necrosis factor, C-reactive protein. Thus, in diabetics, these dietary AGEs can promote inflammatory mediators leading to tissue injury. Uh, the good news is that restricting these kinds of foods may suppress the inflammatory effects. So these glycotoxins may be kind of the missing link between increased consumption of animal fat and meat and the subsequent development of type 2 diabetes in the first place, as well as Alzheimer's disease, the final disease on our dreaded list.